Hey guys, welcome back to DMAC Customs. Gonna get down and dirty with old inner seal, inner under seal removal and rust removal on the uh, uh, guards on the Area 51. Okay, so in this video, I'm um, just going to be cleaning up the inner guards and stuff so I'm going to start doing a little bit of work in them to um, sort out what I'm going to do around the, uh, the shock tower. Um, and there's a few rust repairs in there doing on a couple of bits and bobs like around the old battery tray down here. And um, there's a bit on the other one that's got a bit, it's a bit sort of rugged, rusty, um, where the something bolts onto it. That's on the front, on the little bit that sort of pop rivets off here. But anyway, let's get to it. I'm going to get start cleaning this stuff up so it's a bit more pleasant to work on than um, all covered in bitumen and dirt and rust and grime. Uh, so let's get to it. We've got some of this old style, um, I don't know what you call it, tar style bitumen based under seal that's and splashed around on the inside of the uh, inner front fenders of the Area 51. Um, fortunately it's not all over it, just a few bits here and here. I've, I've already had a go at one side, I thought I'd just uh, show you how I, how I got that side done and, and uh, get onto it. Okay, um, this is how I did the other side. I really undid all the rivets for the front half. Uh, rivets at that end and I just started on this side with a bit of uh, old old viper with some new teeth and to get all the loose scale of this stuff off so that just a quick quick grind over the top of this with, with viper and um, just takes off the little dry scaly stuff I didn't spend too much time kind of trying to get this bitumen and stuff off because it just gets hot which I'm going to use the heat gun for uh, I know some people use um, dry ice and they kind of freeze it and bang it and all just falls off and stuff but it's Easter Sunday and I haven't got any dry ice that's right so check out the next step So that makes pretty easy work of getting the worst of it off. Um, old old uh, wire teeth on the Viper, they kind of do a pretty good job of getting the rest of it off. I did try a little bit of lacquer thinners on there, on the other one, and that does work to, to a degree as well, but it evaporates really fast. So I might try some turpentine or something. Let this cool off a little bit first. Got some turps. Give that a crack. See, see if it moves this stuff. Don't know if it will, but. Kind of does. I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of making it move. 
the lacquer thinners work better. I thought I'd try some wax and grease remover since I found it when I was going to um, get the lacquer thinners. Been a bit stingy with my rag, I'll just reuse this one. Whoop. make a whole lot of difference. Show you, show you the lack of things. This is really important you get a clean rag for this part. Fortunately, that could then evaporate quite quickly. As you can see, when you use lots of lacquer thinner, it actually works quite well. So that's about all I want to do with that as far as using solvents to clean this up. Well, as you can see, got a lot of pitting and stuff in here, so I'm not sure what I'm, this is an easy fix, but I'm not sure what to do about all this pitting. No one's got any ideas, you can always sing out and let me know if there's some kind of special treatment or whether I just make a whole new bit. It might actually be the easiest way, but I don't need that anymore. I don't know what they're for. This is paper thin. So I just want to show you something actually, but you look at how, how thick or thin I should say this steel is. Pretty much this whole car's sheet metal is so thin. I'm surprised it's still here after 70 years. 70 years. I'll show you the other side. So it's still got like this this weird sort of thing. I think that's actually paint that was under the um the bitumen under seal. Yeah, it's, it's cleaned up all right though. This side's pretty good, but it's just the other side for it pits in. This is the side that's in the, uh, in the not in the engine bay. Yeah, so that's the stages I've sort of got to of stripping this stuff back. Um, that bitumen stuff's not too big a deal to try and get off the rest of it anyway. Still got bits and pieces stuck here and there, but not bad. Not bad at all. But I might squirt some uh, some of this stuff on there. It's not my favourite, but it's all I could get at the time. Um, helps convert 
It's a bit like the Duplicolor Rust Fix, which is my favourite, so I might just give these a wipe down with some lacquer thinners and just squirt some of that over there to seal them up again. I might get in these bits with some sandpaper, actually, before I do that. And uh, so they're a bit nicer to work on, so rather than being all grubby and covered in tar, which likes to kind of burn when you're welding around it. Okay, so I've given a bit of a wipe down with some um, lacquer thinners or acetone, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to give these a bit of a spot just to kind of treat that, those little surface rusty bits. For now, these will all get stripped back properly and completely later on. I just wanted to make them a bit, a bit nicer to work on in the short term than and all grubby and gross. To do this side first, but got all carried away and excited again. So. Okay, this is about 10 minutes later, all that um, rust converter stuff starting to activate. It really works best on kind of surface rusty steel rather than shiny steel. Shiny steel it seems to just sit on top. Surface rusty stuff it kind of really seems to get in there um, and kind of bite into it. And it's not too bad, like I was saying earlier, I prefer the Duplicolor one but I couldn't actually find any of that when I was out, out looking, so I had to go for the CRC one. You know, it's not a paid sponsorship from either of them or anything <laughs> by any stretch. I just, yeah, I just like using those products for this sort of thing. And um, I've done it on a few other cars in the past, and it seems to hold up pretty good over time, as long as it's all sealed up and painted and under sealed and all that kind of stuff it's primed properly and all that later on but at this stage this is all we, we really need this lot to be just makes it a bit nicer to work with so this was the whole reason for 
cleaning these up now so I can work on them. Oh. Maybe a washer would be good on there. Hmm. Who would have thunk it? Um, because I built these shock towers for my shocks, not really even thinking about where the uh, inner fenders were going to run. Now, this bloke's got to figure out how to tidy that up and make it look look good. But we have down here, we have daylight. This is so thin and pitted and that from the old battery tray leaking its guts all over the place, eating into the paint and the steel. Getting the old tin worm going. The car cancer. So we're gonna figure out what to do. It's like obviously fix that rust. That would if that was it, that would be pretty straightforward, but it's this real thin pocky sort of stuff down here. It's like bloody craters of the moon. Um, do I you know, chop out whole big pieces and make whole new sort of lower sections for the inner fenders? That might be the the nicer way, looking way to go. So on this side, I need to rebuild, reinstate something in there anyway because of whatever that thing was for. Steering box I think went there. Um, pitting's nowhere near as bad obviously, didn't have a battery here. This piece here is, was better on the inside but rougher on the outside. And again, still got to do something with the old uh, shock towers somehow. Made a hurry of a mess today. I've probably got about eight hours of vacuuming left to do now. Um, now I'm only about halfway through doing that part of the job. I've, I've still got a bunch of other sheet metal for the front that all has to be cleaned back and prepped up. And and as I said, I'm only that's only just the rust roughed in stages. I've still got it clean, uh, <laughs> sand them all back properly. But that was just to kind of get them sealed up, so I can um, kind of do a bit of work on them and and make sure that they're going to be suitable for. You know, what I want to do, or do I make whole new inner fenders? I don't know yet. Um, got any ideas? Put it down in the comments down below. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to go and have a, another beer. Um, if you'd like to see some more progress on the old 51, Area 51, here it is. Um, hit the subscribe button, chuck us some likes, chuck us some comments, chuck us some questions, and hit that little bell for subscriptions if you're if you want to subscribe it you get notifications and it tells you when new videos come along um you got to do some shit in your phone to sort that out um other than that come and see us again see you next time cheers peace